Hello, Joe Cool here. You're watching The Peach Pitch, a music review channel where I review music. Today we're talking about the new album from Bell Orchestra. It's called House Music. So this album is from the Montreal, Canada-based instrumental ensemble. This is their first album in over a decade, and they've been around since around the mid-2000s, early 2000s, providing some interesting, unique combinations of chamber music, classical music, with post-rock isms and sort of these eclectic electronic rhythms as well. Most notably, the group features Richard Reed Perry and Sarah Nofield, Nofield both being members of Arcade Fire, uh, Richard on bass, Sarah on cello. What really sparked my interest was not just the two members from Arcade Fire, but the label that house music is being released on, which is the UK label Erase Tapes, which I've been familiar with for, I would say, a couple years now. This label is fantastic if you're not familiar with Erase Tapes become familiarized. This this label features a lot of great genres from classical music, electronic music, ambient music, jazz, and different com many different combinations of those styles. Niels Fromm and Penguin Cafe are among the artists being promoted from the label. If you haven't heard Penguin Cafe, please do. It's the moniker of Arthur Jeff's, Simon Jeff's son. Please listen to Penguin Cafe. I love Penguin Cafe. I stand by Penguin Cafe. The Imperfect C is a bang. All that aside, uh, I was I was excited for house music. This this record, uh, I have not heard anything from Belt Orchestra before, and I don't think you need to be. It's not named after the electronic music genre of the same name, nor is it a soundtrack that you're supposed to play to your house in my opinion and after reading some descriptions about the record on erase tapes website i would say that house music really is a description of the musicianship and the kinsmanship between all the members of this ensemble in a way where these members really play fluently really as one cohesive piece. Each member or each couple members performing in a certain room of the house, but all together really form this well-structured um, building, hence a house. And I really think this record really exemplifies the not only the talents, but it really just shows the fluidity and how each member really performs in this fluid motion to a point where oftentimes there's so many things going on with this record that you don't even know where it's coming from or or which member's performing it. Similar to that of some of the music videos, if you've seen any of the music videos from this record, you really see these layers of visuals from each member, kind of psychedelic in a way, and kaleidoscopic, where you don't really know where it's where it's coming from and i would say that's a great description of house music it's and it's not necessarily a bad thing at all i think it's actually one of the really 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 cool qualities of this record it really just sounds like one huge collective rather than six individual members like i mentioned with the label erase tapes this record really kind of nails you on the head with its stylings. It's certainly a combination of classical music, chamber music, electronic music, post-rock as well. One huge thing to note about this record is that it is one 43-minute long piece. Uh, it's, it's one long piece from start to finish. Yes, there is a track listing. Uh, the parts are divided and named, but when you listen to this thing, it is one holistic piece and it's also improvisational this whole thing is improvised i don't know how much of it has been planned or how much of it has been improvised but reading into it I, i've heard a, a big chunk of it is being improvised which is one of the most impressive things about this record because this record sounds so 
uh, impressive with its musicianship and its writing too. It's it's kind of shocking that it's that some of it is improvised. Improvisation is one of the most underrated aspects in music, in my opinion. I think it should be embraced, and Bell Orchestra really embraced that on this record. The majority of the songs or parts, I, I want to say parts because this is really just one fluent uh, piece itself, but I would say each part is really frantic, intense, uh, very brooding. Oftentimes these parts really have their own builds throughout each track, and I would say it can be a little unsettling, really. And I would say this album is not for everyone. This album is quite experimental. It's it's out there. But I think there's plenty of, of melodies, rhythms that are very sticky, uh, can be very sticky. And But sticky to me, I mean, it sticks. The layers of instrumentation can be chaotic and thrilling at the same time, while also some of these moments can be very beautiful and cinematic. I would say excluding the last 10 minutes of this record, you're getting a non-stop, intense, brooding, frantic record that's, that will keep you on your toes. It sounds like a soundtrack to a film that's really intense, really epic, and really moving. And this record is, is really a new experience in its own right. Each listen, you'll find new moments, new sounds that you haven't heard before, uh, new tidbits, you know, here and there. And that's also one thing that's really cool about this record is really each listen is a, is a unique experience in its own right. You'll kind of no start to notice more things as you listen to it, kind of like a movie where you experience the more times you watch it, the more things you catch you catch on there. The instrumental palette of this record is pretty diverse. Vocals, steel guitar, pedal steel, horns, trumpets, guitar, bass, drums, electronics, synths, gongoma, which I had to look up because I had no idea what that was, and strings too, and it's pretty diverse. Let's talk about the best moments on this record. Dark Steel features these fiddles, what sounds like fiddles playing throughout this rapid fiddle playing over some glitchy electronics. It's pretty dark. And I would say it's the most southern fried moment of this record, if you can even call it that. And there's also some abrasive horn playing, like kind of like a mariachi band on acid. What you're thinking, which was released prior to this album's release, is the most rewarding payoff of this album. It has the best progression and best climax. It's extremely explosive. It's got these post-rock percussive elements, kind of like your typical <laughs> post-rock albums that you've heard. It's kind of like a swirling tornado of sound that's kind of just lifting you up and you're just unable to see the elements that are in the tornado. You're unable to see how the tornado came to be, but it's still thrilling nonetheless. This track perfectly flies into movement, which let me just make a quick note. These transitions between these parts are fantastic. They really, really are fluid and perfect in a way. I would say this transition into movement is perfect, perfectly placed, which I don't even know if it was planned, but it really sounds great. And movement is also another moment on here that's one of my favorites. It's a bit more contained than what you're thinking with its steady beat and flow, but its, fi it's final minutes of, of movement really is a blissful chaos with these like shattering symbols and, and just everything is just crumbling down below you. All the Time is a really cool moment on the record that kind of acts as an interlude of sorts and repeats these bursts of electronics sounds I would say these electronic bursts that you hear are really, really glitchy and almost volcanic in a way. I would say like eruptions from a volcano. Color Fields is another huge highlight on the record, another really intense moment that has this rising instrumentation of strings, horns, and percussion all together. Making Time has these really cool jumpy, distorted vocals similar to that of 
Tiondai Braxton from Battles fame, uh, from their debut record, Mirrored. It kind of reminds me of that where the vocals aren't really treated like normal vocals in a pop song, but are kind of treated like another another element of sound. The final m moments of this record, the last two parts, are really the last 10 minutes of this record are really the only time where it's really slowed down, really cooled down, and are not as intense as the rest of the parts are. And it's kind of a reflective moment, I would say, definitely a resolution, and kind of repeat elements that you've previously heard. That's kind of why I would say it's kind of a reflective moment on the record, which is which is nice. It's kind of cool how they repeat melodies or repeat compositional moments like in a different way. What's really impressive about this album is not only the performances and compositions themselves, but really the improvisation and the quick decision making from the members. It's just really baffling to me that this thing is a 43 minute long piece. It's just such a complex record with so many different things going on. It's just kind of shocking that all of this came to be from one performance. And it's extremely impressive throughout nonetheless. All in all, I'll just have to say this thing is great. This thing is fantastic. This thing is thrilling throughout. And there's plenty, plenty reason to go back to this thing and plenty of things to dissect. Like I said, it, it, it isn't for everyone. It's quite experimental. It's quite out there. It's quite intense and loud and in your face. And oftentimes there's a lot going on on this album. There's a lot of things happening at once. And it's by far the most enjoyable and unique record I've heard this year so far. If I have to give it a rating out of 10, I, I think I'd give it a 9 out of 10, honestly, um, which I don't give much. I, I don't just hand out 9s like free Butterfingers on Halloween night. No, I, I give them pretty sparsely and for good reason. I think, you know, records really need to be up there to deserve a 9 and I think this album is deservedly so. I was thinking about giving this thing an 8. It's kind of in between an 8 and a 9. But, you know, it's a good day. I feel good. I feel good. And I'd give it a 9 out of 10. And uh, I think Bell Orchestra just sound really fantastic together. And the musicianship is by far one of the most impressive things about this album. And... Rather than six individual musicians, I would say they really sound together and interconnected as one, kind of similar to that of separate rooms combining into one house. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. I really hope you check this album out because I highly recommend it. I think it's one of the most fun and unique albums of the year. And yeah, from what I've lost in my hairline, I've only grown in my love for music. The Peach Pitch... Peace out, sayonara, goodbye, and good luck.